this has been a rocky year for the Bharatiya Janata Party. The election campaigns boasted of a slow way. Ab ki baar char so paar. Mean this time we cross 400 seats. Pura desh kya raha hai ab ki baar? But we all know what happened. The BJP led NDA alliance was not even able to cross 300 seats. The BJP alone was the single largest party with 240 seats, down 63 compared to the 2019 election results. Many term this a modern defeat for the party. So, will this election result affect Modi's plans for the Indian economy? The union budget is expected to be released in July, and this will be Modi government's first budget with a coalition government in power. So there are several socio-economic and political factors that could affect the 24-25 union budget. Let's have a look at them. Let me remind you, the coalition parties of the BJP, the TDP and the JDU come from Andhra Pradesh and Bihar. The interesting thing here is that in the past, both of them have made demands for being recognized under the special category status. So what does this mean? The concept of special category status was introduced to provide preferential treatment to certain disadvantaged states. Because certain states have less resources and development capacity, the centre tries to help them with initial support. For example, the centre gives more funds to these states for implementing centrally sponsored schemes. Such states also get significant concessions in taxes among other things. Now Bihar and Andhra Pradesh bring back their demand for a special category status. This would mean a lot more expenditure for the centre and a reduction in revenue from these states. Of course, the centre wouldn't be very keen on such measures because it puts an additional fiscal burden on them. At least in now, there don't seem to be any risks in the coalition about this issue. From 1991 to about 2014, we had a fair bit of play of uh, coalition governments and that was a period of fair bit of uh, movement it performed so that it led to higher growth. So it's not that coalition government lead to some bit of com compromise on policy front. We don't expect that because the history shows that the part is different governments are concerned. I mean, there has been a policy consistency. However, the one thing certain about politics is that nothing is certain. People can change their stance at any time. Anyways, the point is that these states want additional fiscal help from the center. And if you analyze the spending patterns of the center, it becomes clear that they are less interested in giving subsidies and more interested in capital expenditure. The spending patterns of the BJP are in a direction that is opposite to what alliance partners want. And remember, without the support of these two parties, the BJP would lose its majority in the parliament. Since 2014, there has been an overall decline in the amount spent on subsidies as a part of the total budget expenditure as per data collected by India Ratings and Research. In FI14, when the BJP came to power, subsidies accounted for 16% of the total budget expenditure. This number reduced to 9.8% in FI20. It increased to 21.6% during the COVID-19 period before dropping to 8.6% in FI25's interim budget estimates. And let me tell you, in the recent elections, the NDA lost 44 rural seats compared to 2019 and India Block gained 77. CNBC TV18 has reported. And all this comes on the back of a weakening rural demand and problems of unemployment among young people. Topics like income inequality and unemployment were the backbone of political campaigning done by opposition parties this election. There would uh, be some bit of uh, increase in revenue expenditure because the fact that the growth has been good but the economic recovery post-COVID has been uh, of K-shaped uh, one way which we have been highlighting for quite some time. Uh, there would be some bit of directed measures. There would be some bit of uh, higher allocations towards your, uh, uh, especially towards rural development uh, ministry. Uh, we expect the revenue expenditure to increase by about 6% uh, year on year compared to the provisional numbers that we right now second part would be that uh, the capex would be um, uh, increased somewhat but and uh, mostly it would be capex loans to the states. These socio-economic and political pressures could nudge the government to spend more on subsidies. Past data tells us that the government is much more interested in increasing capital expenditure than revenue expenditure. 
let's understand these terms before moving ahead. So capital expenditure consists of things like acquisition of land, building, machinery, equipment, and loans granted by the center. Revenue expenditure, on the other hand, consists of expenses which are needed for the day-to-day -day functioning of the government, like paying interest charges of debt, subsidies, salaries, etc. Even the money spent on centrally sponsored schemes like the Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana comes under revenue expenditure. Let me tell you something interesting. In the last two years, the government's capital expenditure has increased by two times, from Rs 5 lakh crores to Rs 11 lakh crores in that 24-25 interim union budget. Whereas its revenue expenditure increased only by 0.25 times, from Rs 29 lakh crores to Rs 36 lakh crores during the same period. The government believes that capital expenditure will create a multiplier effect and boost the economy along with employment. Let me explain you multiplier effect with an example. Imagine the government spends money on creating roads, which will lead to more demand for jobs. People will start working there and earning money. The employees will now spend this money to buy the things that they want. This effect is creating a multiplier effect in the economy. Moreover, imagine that the road also facilitates travel so people can reach their offices or shopping destinations. Such multiplier effects can occur across different sectors and in different ways. In an article published in Deccan Herald, experts write that in India, earlier research has estimated that the capital expenditure multiplier is 2.45 and revenue expenditure multiplier is 0 0.99. What this essentially indicates is that for every 100 rupees spent on capital expenditure, the national income increases by 245. Well, for every rupees 100 spent on revenue expenditure, the national income increases by only rupees 99. If you see the recent times also like from FY22 to FY23 and in fact in FY24 also, the government has focused on fiscal consolidation in the sense that whatever fiscal deficit number they have put out, it's uh, the fiscal deficit has been better than what the initial budget numbers uh, are. So that basically shows that the government has uh, focused on the fiscal consolidation part. That is it more or less the expectation from our side also. It's not just that the government has like uh, put an ex uh, expenditure compression uh, uh, so as to say. The, they have utilized that higher revenue that they have got from the uh, better ta tax compliance measures by putting it generally it towards capex and uh, if you see the capex of the central government specifically has gone to above like three three and a half percent of gdp in uh, recent times and which has like given a boost to the economy the result has been that the growth has been above seven percent uh real growth has been above seven percent for three years consecutively which is a very positive thing uh, from the overall economic perspective otherwise capital expenditures is important revenue expenditure is important too subsidies which are a part of revenue expenditure help maintain food prices at a low level if food and fertilizer subsidies are gone you can't imagine how expensive it would be to buy wheat, rice and vegetables. So this time around, there are a lot of additional factors for the government to consider that weren't there in the last 10 years. In the next few weeks, maybe just a few days, we'll find out if the center will change its habit of drastically increasing capital expenditure or the alliance focus on revenue expenditure. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out our social media handle for in-depth coverage of the 24-25 Union Budget.